Welcome to Corby Town TV. Hello, my name's Chuck. This is Michael. Hello. And we have been joined by a very prestigious character at Corby Town. He is and was a huge fan, once with blonde hair. Yes. Did you scary. see that picture the other day? Scarily, yes. Um, and he's now reached the position of club secretary, which I'm not laughing about because it's it's a bad position. It's just a thankless task, isn't it? It's yes. unbelievable. James Macca, oh, so, yes. how are you? McCafferty, of course. You know. Yes, I am good, thank you. Now, you've been a Corby Town fan for a very long time, since you were probably uh, 16, that we found out in a previous um, podcast. It was about three or four years ago for me. So um, you've been involved with Corby Town for a long time. Why did you come and support Corby Town? Because Robbie Dunyon used to do my head in. So, uh, <laughs> he still does people's heads um, in. Yes, his um, his dad was the assistant under Lee Gobber, two thousand and four, in the old four five season, and then um, we used to play football together. So yeah, he just he kept pestering and pestering, and then I decided to come up and watch us get turned over five two by Cleveland. And, yeah, that <laughs> that's 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 rather strange. You've mentioned Lee Glover, obviously current current I say at the moment in time uh, manager of Kettering Town who'd yes. just been relegated and, Dob and, and, and big Rob Dunyon was uh, his assistant manager at Corby Town who yeah. then went on to become the manager of Corby Town yes he did uh, and win a, a league title runner up runner up behind Boreham Wood still went up though yep still Boreham Wood White. back Boreham in the days Wood. when two teams went up from this level yeah. so in Boreham Wood there's a team I don't like um <laughs> Yes. Two reasons. Um, Arsenal ladies play at Bournemouth, yep. and it's the only place they've not let me in as a member of the press. Yeah. He doesn't like anybody apart from Tottenham, by the way. <laughs> yes. So, um, but you're you're here today because um, it's the end of the season. Yes. There's some good news on the horizon, there and is, you yeah. have you have some information you want to impair to us. Yes, I do. So. Um, yeah, I think last season finished really well. Obviously, we've announced today that um, Setch is staying on, Setch and Daz, um, which is great news. Um, I think that brought a real buzz back to, back to Steel Park. Um, I think we worked out that the average attendance was 639 um, during their time here. So I think as a thank you to, to all the loyal supporters, because it has been a hard time, just not on the pitch, but with COVID, with obviously the cost of living crisis that's going on at the minute, um, uh, we'd like to repay the, the fans for their, their hard work and we've decided to, to roll over the season ticket prices for next season. Um, there'll be no increase in admission prices um, on the day when you turn up. So we just want to say a massive thank you because um, we know it has been hard. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's great that the fans, are, the fans are turning up more than we have the last few years. And yeah, it's just, I hope it's our way of repaying them slightly. Which is a great, a great touch and a great thing to the, the club have done. So admission on the gate will stay the same. Yes. And if you had uh, a season ticket, if you're a season ticket holder here at Corby Town, you can get your new season ticket for the for the same price that it was last year. Yes. So that that's that's great news if you are a fan. And the the, the weird thing is, Corby Town has an awful lot of season ticket holders. Yes. It? Yeah. Yeah. We've got we've got hardcore and um, the same pretty much every year. It's always the the same people that. Let's sign up straight away and again to thank you to them we will have an early bird offer um the, the home pre-season friendlies which we are working on now and um, hopefully they'll be announced by the time this podcast goes live and um, entry for all season ticket holders um will be free for the pre-season home games and uh, obviously it, we, we are talking it's it's thursday today and uh after a meeting with stevie and the board uh, as you say gareth etchell and darren Will be staying at the club. It's Darren's birthday today. It's actually today, isn't it? So uh, yeah, it was a bit weird. He um, he sent me a message this morning, dropping a hint. It was his birthday. Thinking <laughs> he was getting um, loads of birthday messages, but it was just Corby fans um, begging him to stay. <laughs> so um, yeah, happy birthday, Dad. So um, uh, well, it's great news, and and obviously everybody is buzzing around Corby Town because it, it's just tremendous to hear that we've got a great foundation. Yeah. The position we finished the league in sets things nicely yeah. there's a couple of players already gone so we will say to the players that have left and they are um connor fury has left the club um and also scott floyd has left the club thanks very much for your time your energies and your efforts guys 
it's brilliant. I'm sure you'll we'll see you around in football. Um, but uh, you know, it, 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 this is time now for Search to actually build the team around him and the team that he wants to have. Yeah, definitely. I think he. We spoke with him this morning. Um, he definitely wants to get out today. Sadly, he couldn't be here to to speak himself. But yeah, he's he's been chuffed here and. I think, was it 28 points in the last 12 games? Um, so we can carry on that form next season. It's going to be a whole summer rebuild. Um, you can see that coming. There was a few areas um, where he pinpointed straight away that need improving. We've done that. Um, sadly, we had Charlie Sanders. Charlie was going to be a massive player. His first game here, he scored a worldie, which will be on the goal of the season vote when that goes up. But um, yeah, it's just, he's made small steps. And obviously now, now's the time. And when can the when does the process of actually being able to sign players on start? Officially, um, usually the first of July, and um, that's the first day that registrations are accepted. But yeah, at the minute, I think most players that are non-contract, uh, they're probably free to approach now. Um, so I think last year was it May the eighteenth? We met with uh, the manager here, and I had texts on the nineteenth um, when I was in Spain saying that we're signing this player, we're signing that player. So as much as we can announce who's going to be signing because we've been burnt before, players committing to Corby and yeah. then signing for yeah. somebody else. But yeah, I think news will start filtering through. We're definitely going to have some, some commitments very soon. Um, but the majority of the work will start on the, on the 1st of July. And that makes just, it... Oh, sorry. Go. Just a couple of things going back to the um, season tickets. Um, where can they apply for them? So all of the information will be on the website and um, we'll get it out with the no local news outlets, Corby Radio, um, The Telegraph, all the information will be on there. Um, we are hopeful um, of having something at the town centre. So, yep, as, as long as we can get that sorted, um, everything will be announced on Monday. We're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Another question for you, hopefully you can answer this. Family tickets. Um, is there a, a special uh, offer for families next season? Not in a minute. No, it's that's something that we're, we're speaking about as well. Because um, obviously we want to reward the families. We like seeing families up here. I think you can see on your videos um, the amount of youngsters that stand behind the goal. It's, uh, it's great to see. And I know quite a lot of people that have started bringing their children up themselves. Um, one of the things that will lead on to is our next announcement. Um, we're going to have a youth membership. Um, for next season so the youth membership is um for all under 16s um just so we can have obviously their their information on record um any supporter under the age of 16 will either have to be accompanied um by a parent or guardian or have to have a youth membership um so again that should be released over the weekend we're hoping everything will go through and, and on monday we'll be able to announce full details of all tickets all packages and the youth membership that's, that's one of the big things. We've seen other clubs at our level. Um, and step two, it's worked wonders for them. And I think we've had the podcast before with Stevie. Um, he's mentioned that there have been a few occasions that probably let us down last year um, at certain games. And it is kind of the younger the younger support. Um, so, yeah, to, to be able to, to get some regulations in place. And I think that would be massive. I think a lot more clubs will be doing that, you'll notice, this season. As you say, it's not an orthocratic kind of thing. This no, has no. been something that other clubs have tried. It's been successful. Yeah, yeah. And if you're under 16, it kind of protects you too as well, doesn't it? Because Definitely, if yeah. anything goes wrong at the club, and, and you know, nothing should go wrong at the club, this is a friendly club where it, it, all sensibility it, it is there and everything's covered. Yes. But if there was an incident and you were a member and part of the under 16s club, it would be better for them and for the club. No, so. definitely. It's, you get a lot of under 16s up here and the support's fantastic. You see them all standing by the tunnel at full time. You love the players. The interaction's quality. But like you say, if anything did happen, at least now we'll have that full database. We'll have all the parents' records. Um, we can get in touch with them. And I think that's it. It's just having that database. And look, we'd love parents to, uh, children to bring the parents up. Mm. I mean, how old was I? I think I was probably about 16, 17 and I still got my dad up here. So... It doesn't matter what age you are. Yeah, just, just bring your family. It's a, it's a family club. Um, the the spirit's been great over the last year. And yeah, we just want to make it uh, one step better. We're always trying to improve. And uh, because of your role as club secretary, yeah. this is kind of one of the busiest periods of the season for you, isn't it? Because yeah. you're signing on players, 
you're looking at players, you, you're contacting them, you're making sure things work around the club. Yeah. Uh, I, there's generally a pre-season uh, gadabout um, where the, the club chairman and the secretary will go away and then we'll meet with other secretaries and other club chairman and uh, there's a big meeting. Are you, are you off for that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are you looking forward to that for Stevie? Because the chairman, chairman enjoys these events, especially when they're yeah. at St George's Park. Ooh, no, no, I've, I've got the, the pleasure of Winter Gardens in Blackpool this year. Oh. So yeah, um, I'll be up there with um, another person you've had on the podcast, Paul Tiffany. Oh yeah? Yeah, the assistant for the 18s, yeah. Me and Paul are going up. Um, so yeah, it's good. It, it's all about building contacts, you know. I mean, obviously it's, I just want to pay tribute. First and foremost, to, to Jerry. Um, yeah, I, I used to think Jerry was an absolute pain. Um, <laughs> he used to fill me up every year, um, around about June, July. He always had to get his paper done for the league. And he'd fill me up and say, Maka, I need to check, what's your phone number? And I always thought, you fell me. <laughs> this is my number. But he was so, he was just so particular with everything he'd done. It didn't matter whether he had the information, he wanted to double check. I used to think he was a pain, but in the role now uh, I've got so much respect for everything he's done um, yeah he's a massive miss here um, same with John season tickets talk about season tickets um, obviously I was doing the media and I'd have John in my inbox every three hours can you publicise this can you do this can you do that and you know just two great people and yeah, it was such a horrible start to the season mm. um, so yeah and I just want to say thank you to both of them their, their, their loss has sent ripples through the club. I mean, yeah. they're both big characters, both huge members of the club that, that did many things for many people here. So, I mean, we probably wouldn't be sitting here now as in the media centre doing these podcasts if it maybe wasn't for Jerry, because otherwise the, the, the things have moved along. Yes. And you're right. But um, it also meant that when you picked up the reins as club secretary, everything was... Uh, as you said earlier, dotted T's and and yes, yeah, yeah. and and uh, across T's and dotted I's. So, yes. yeah, it, it, it's a it's a huge a huge role to have. And as I said earlier, it it's quite, you know, it, it's a thankless task. No, definitely. I think uh, the amount of material that was on a, on a laptop that Jerry left it it helped me no end. Um, yeah, it's it's a tough time, you know. You you're trying to. You're trying to go over the loss of someone that I was so close with. I remember going on the buses, mm -hmm. um, 2004, 2005, and you had Jerry sat down the front. He had a, he, he wouldn't leave his seat unless he had to stand up and read the scores. But <laughs> since my first game, um, going to watch Corby, he was there. Um, he was such a massive, massive presence. And yeah, to, to be able to lead on from that, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without everything he's left behind. So now nah, it's great. And yeah, I was, I was through a bit of deep end, let's say. Um, yeah, I think we had to try and sign a few players. Um, obviously, we had the horrendous weather, trying to rearrange games, and you just don't realise how much work goes into it. Mm. Um, and like you said, we're coming up to that period now where I'm going to be having to meet players, get players to sign on. I'm probably going to meet. Hopefully, we'll get them here. We're going to bring them in here, um, and yeah, get 18 to 20 players signed on before the first of July because the day we can officially sign them on and go on holiday. So it's perfect timing. <laughs> So um, I want all the pages I've done before then. So uh, did, Jerry wouldn't have gone on holiday on the 1st of July, would he? No, he would have waited until the 2nd. He went to Japan. But yeah. <laughs> and uh, obviously, uh, there's a question there. Um, I would think that should we should we start playing Carnival de Paris before the games again? Sorry, Jerry, not going to happen. So uh, yes. we'll stay with the undertones and uh, teardrop explodes and some strange music. But um, it's, um, it's certainly uh, it's certainly been changed. It's certain things have changed here at Still Park. So um, what else is is on board? I mean, uh, there's lots of ideas. As I say, that we're we're hoping that we might be able to get some sort of um, unit in town or a shop yes. to 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 help. Uh, sell the, the the season tickets and yeah. the kids tickets the club tickets so and and also maybe share off some of these pictures because there's been some great pictures over the season yeah, and uh, that have been taken by the photography team and uh, the media team thanks very much jim and and um uh, and dave dave and of yes. course yeah and neil and, and neil so it's it's it would be great to celebrate that and certainly yeah, in the middle of town because mm -hmm. yes. i this this town this is to you lot this town's got 66,000 people in it, right? And we're getting 600. Where are you? 
Let's be having you! That's, that's not my quote. Um, but you Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a shame. laughs> I can rustle up a decent scrambled egg too. But it's, tr- it's, kind of sh- it's kind of true though, isn't it? No, definitely. I think we should, we should definitely be high in, having higher attendances uh, than what we have been. But you look at the, the season we had, not the season gone, the season before, um, we did lose a fair few um, because it was a tough time. Um, but we are going in the right direction. I think at the start of the season, we were buzzing around the 500s, and it was great. You're thinking, 500 average after what happened last year, mm. it's good. And then to take that up to, like I say, 640 for the last seven home games. So we are going in the right direction. Um, yeah, and and having that having that face in the town centre, I think that'll help massively. We know that not everybody's online. We've got a, a hardcore older fan mm. base, concession season ticket holders, and we just want to be there for them, regardless of whether it's for them to come and buy a season ticket or... These people just want to speak about Corby Town. So if we can have people at the town centre, they can come up, collect a pension, do whatever they do on a Tuesday afternoon. Do you collect a pension nine, now? Half eleven. I don't know why I'm asking Michael. Yeah, oh, it's, no. yeah, yeah. He's younger than me. Yeah. We need the ground staff here. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> We're the same yeah. age. Yeah. What are you on about? <laughs> I'm 37. And uh, <laughs> TV age. Um, but, I, I mean, obviously, th- this helps as well. This, this whole kind of media centre... Sharing information, sharing news, having conversations with volunteers and fans, that will happen. Um, put your best bib and tucker on uh, when you're introduced in. But it, it all helps, doesn't it? And it's, it's making some sort of difference when it comes to businesses in the town yeah. wanting to be part of Corby Town and, and the football club. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah we need, we need the, the businesses behind us. Um, and they are. <laughs> perfectly placed. Um, and a lot of them are through friends. I can look at these and... I know people that have sponsored us here, Sims Roofing, I know Stevie, he's got friends in all these businesses, and it's not through um, watching us on TV, we're not on Sky Sports, so it's word of mouth, and saying how good things are up here, and then bringing these people up, and got Cardigan Arms there, um, I think we had Craig originally sponsored the Raven, mm. um, yeah, always get a big bird in the Cardigan, and then, um, <laughs> yeah, and now Erin, Erin's took over, she's, uh, she's done wonders for, for helping us with a website this year um, and she was up here for the second last home game um, with kids they were mascots so we just want to say a massive thank you not just to them but to everybody um, that sponsors the club but it is through word of mouth and we need to we need to just talk about everything good that's happening at the football club and just bring everyone along you touched on another subject there of course mascots because they generally come to you so yes. wh- what is that what is the process if you've got a team or you're part of a group that, that would like to sponsor or be a mascot at Corby Town, yeah. what do they do? Uh, just get in touch um, through social media. You can message myself or you can message the Facebook page, Twitter page, comment under this on YouTube, comment your team name. Um, we will get in touch. Um, I've already started compiling a list for next season. Um, so yeah, I think I've got three teams that are shouting up already. Obviously we love showcasing our own teams, um, but we also want to show everything in the town. So. This isn't just for Corby Town teams. This is for everybody. We want to make everyone proud of being from Corby and we want to make everyone proud of, of our football club. We are the premier football club in the town. Um, so we want everyone up here. Is there an age restriction on the mascots? I'm only asking this because uh, several players at Kettering Town would like to be mascots at Corby Town because they see it as a bigger <laughs> club now. Yes, well, um, I think we'll have to wait and see who we sign because I think a couple of years ago it was a bit awkward when we had some players that were walking out with mascots taller than them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, I want you to see who set signs and then we might put a, an age limit on it. But now we've had 13s and 14s up here. Um, we had Phil Toon, they done the last game. They mm. won the County Cup. Fabulous. Great achievement for them. So, well done to everyone at the, the Corby Town Lionesses. But uh, they were the under 12s. So, we're happy to, to showcase the best of everything that's going on in the town. So, just get in touch. Uh, and and it's about that all-encompassing, involving all the clubs that we've got with the Corby Town name, yeah. uh, and bringing them all along and, and making them feel part of the bigger club, the bigger picture, and, uh, and Corby Town Football Club indeed. So uh, I'm only joking, but if you've got any comments, obviously there's a comment box probably up there, actually on the TV. Um, <laughs> Kettering Town fans, find it. Uh, 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 with both their fingers, yeah. and um, okay. oh. I'll turn off the uh, notifications on Twitter now. Thank you. <laughs> It's not just catching diamonds as well. So, um, n- oh, are you asking that question? Oh, he's got a good one, ladies and gentlemen. A million dollar question. He yes. gets asked every season. Yes. You've seen it, haven't you? Oh, no. Are we likely to see a new kit? I believe so, yes. Yeah, 
luckily if we um we have got the new kit in the pipeline um not seen it no but i know um the chairman's very excited about it chairman loves it he loves keeping this under wraps i think he does a lot he does a lot for the club he's a great guy but when it comes to the kits he loves finding a kit picking the kit keeping it under wraps and then boom <laughs> grand unveil and this year's grand unveil will be here excellent i didn't know that and that's good uh, we, but well, i do know what color it's going to be though if we do a, um, um you were saying about putting a pop-up shop or something up the town center yes um would there be something like selling kit and things like that in there yeah definitely i think we're we need to find out what shop we're going to get first um to find out the feasibility of it but yeah if we do get the shop we'll find out how long for and as long as we can get the kits delivered Poss in time we'll possibly have the kits on sale and um, other merchandise um so yeah we're also I mean, we'll be looking for volunteers as well. Anyone that wants to come and help, because we know a lot of people that they could be of retirement age. They could, they might not be working at the minute, so they just want to get out and do something to help the club. We're going to have a shop up there. It's fantastic for them. They can help the club and they can help themselves, get some fresh air, speak to people. Which is a possibility. That's not set in stone yet, is it? Definitely is. Yeah. But you'll hear it first here yeah, on uh, something Full Time TV. So, but <laughs> it, it, going back to kits, because obviously you, you've been a fan for a long time. I have, and you've been around for a long time and seen what Corby Town wear. Yeah, yeah. And we've got lots of kits around us. And, and, I, and I kind of like this half kit, the black and white half kit and the stripe kits. Yes. But uh, we've got obviously going to this white kit over here. And, and uh, there's, there's... Let's hide that one. That's not going to be our colour. Breaking which news. one? The end one. No, that's a training top with uh, it's <laughs> yes. Michael's training that's top. That's a championship winning yes. training top. <laughs> Just in case uh, any fans are looking at this, thinking we're looking at all these kits. And yeah, to, but no, there are no, 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 no. there are kit colours that we can't really use, isn't there? Because you, though it's it, Corby Town on several occasions have had a red kit. If we go back to the seventies, yeah. oh, I know history. If you go back to the seventies, there were an all red and black kit with the word Rove around, which was a furniture shop in Corby on, on their, on their chest. I'll set this one up. And, um, and then after that, during the man's uh, tenure, you mentioned earlier, big Rob yeah, Dunyon, yeah. he put Corby town in what looked like, what looked like an Ajax kit. Yeah, was it Kingsland away on a Tuesday night? <laughs> I um, I still have one of the jobs I've done here, Kitman. Remember um, that same season, first season of coming to forward, last game of the season, Kitman went AWOL. Rob Dunyon said to me, do it for one game. And that was me for five years. And that's the way it <laughs> happens here. But I remember he used to blame me for everything, all the kit, wrong kit, wrong socks, that's why we got beat. And then we turned up to play Kingsland. And for some reason, I've opened the bag and yeah. I was presented with a lovely red kit that didn't go down too well. It's got a badge on it. This was presented to me, and I'm really proud of it. Um, and I'm butt in there, but I'm going to yeah, say definitely. it. This is when we won the league title, so it's um, it is red, but it's what the management had, and I was uh, privileged that the players uh, presented that to me at the end of the season. I definitely, think it, was. it was very uh, well deserved. Um, you've done a lot. I remember. One of the first times we kind of spoke when you come up here filming, I think would have been one of the away games at Staley Bridge when we managed to acquire a camera from a college. And as I was doing a kit, I was also asked if I could <laughs> film games. Um, so at the time, I think it was Chris Plummer was the manager. And um, yeah, so that was another thing I had to do, hand the kit up, run across the other side of the stadium and start filming games. And then, yeah, a friendly giant come up to me and asked if he could take over filming the games. I've never been so happy to say yes. Uh, <laughs> that's something else I should thank you for. Yeah. And you stepped in for me. You, you stepped in for me up on the uh, to do yeah. Corby Radio Corby as well. Radio. Yeah, there's, there's a lot I haven't done. Play for them. You don't want me playing. But yeah, there's a uh, there's a lot of things I've done at this club. And yeah, I think the last time you made redundant was it? He uh, went for yeah. Yeah, I mean, went around the world. Yeah, so, still, um, still might. Yeah. yeah still time for it hopefully not i'm not doing it again but, yeah stepped in for that but uh yeah it, and, and it's 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 back down to the fact that uh, we're dealing with so many volunteers at the club that have helped out and um but uh, no i was talking about kits and obviously there's a red kit and um, we've had a purple kit um because the original away kit was of course yellow and blue yes yeah, uh, and we've had yellow and black there was a really nice yellow and black we had red, yellow. that was a chorus yeah, kit yeah, as well um um but yeah w w We've, we've had a green kit. Not a particular fan of that kit. I don't remember. No comment. And when we and when we when we won the league down at 
pool. I mean, that, what a fantastic day. 1,000 people from Corby went to pool. And some of them still haven't even got back yet. And, um, and we wore that kind of, it looked like, um, it looked like a Barcelona kit yeah, that had gone old. through the wash. Yes. It was kind of blue and red, wasn't it? Blue with the red at the bottom. Yeah, we've seen them photos, obviously, cropping up on Facebook, the 25th of April, when they had the time hop. So, yeah, that, that was a great kit. I really like that night kit. And but, yeah, we've got a great partnership. We've got a night partnership. So, yeah, we um, we can just look for a night brochure, and we can find whatever kit we think looks best. There are covers we try and avoid, um, especially with the kit clashes in the league. You don't want too many of the same covers. It's not nice. Where was it? Chase Town? Last year, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Change kit. Yeah, change kit. We had to turn up, um, and the referee let us play for like ten minutes, mm. and then decided all oh, shirts look very similar, so we made chase that. Change. Yeah, so, yeah. We yeah. were in, we were in purple. They were in we blue, were blue, and uh, it looked a little bit too close. Mm. So they had to had to, have to strip on the pitch. Yes. And put their away red kit on. Now yeah, Kitman Dave had to run round <laughs> and probably played for another five minutes. That's how long it took him to get to the dressing room. The other side of the pitch, poor guy, and. Yeah, they all changed on the pitch, and I think it was mainly just the socks, but we didn't mm. want to wear the blue kit with the black socks, and we changed the whole kit, and we had it spoken, spoken at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, we had to wear their kit. It's That's like, right, yeah. We had a, we had Which change kit, so we need to be wary of these things. We yeah. need to look for something different that we can always wear that away, and we can always wear the black and white now. So uh, d d this brings me on to, uh, I mean, you're summing it up perfectly. This brings me on to a perfect kind of subject of kit, and it's the sock, right? Yeah. Used to be known as the stocking when you were when you were reading Shoot magazine in the seventies. Stockings, I would I would absolutely adore to see Corby Town in a black and white hoot sock. Oh, that's the that's the kind of thing I'm after in my life—a black and white hoot sock. Yeah, we can uh, definitely speak to Mike because um, we've we've gone with white socks, we've gone with black socks, yeah. and I just think it's got it's, it's come to the point in time where you go. I want a hoop sock. I'm sure there, there will be teams out there. Um, maybe Darlington. I'm sure they've had a hoop sock before. Because, um, yeah, they've got the black and white yeah. hoop jerseys. They went with the black and white hoop sock. I'm sure I've seen them around. So it's probably something we could definitely get. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's time to mix it up. We'll just have to see what the home kit looks like. It well, to go. indeed. But um, just don't want that horrible pink kit. There's, <laughs> there's a photo of me away at Colwyn Bay, I believe. I yes, took my granny yeah. along. We drove up there. When she was about eight years old, I think we were in the National League at the time, the North. Mm. The National League North, yeah. And uh, it was the most International hideous, game in Wales. Hideous yes. kit. It was awful. And I bought one and um, flogged it on a flea market. <laughs> I, it's strange. Okay, yes. a time hop on social media has come back around. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'd completely forgotten a plain white shirt with black bar down it. That was a great kit, wasn't it? We haven't got one here, but yeah, that was some sudden league title. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah. I like that kit. Um, yeah, and we, we, yeah, we had the a similar thing, but yeah, if you, if you've got a favourite kit and you want to write to us, please do. That would be great. Uh, great to hear your comments. Um, See the photos. Yeah, share the photos. Share the, the photos. There's a lot, actually. If you don't know, there's an awful lot of go. If you go back on the Corby Town official Facebook page, there's an awful lot of stuff history-wise on there, but yeah, uh, cool. maybe we need to troll that and bung out some of those videos. But uh, um, I did speak to a, a, an old player the other day, actually, via social media, and uh, yeah, I invited him if he ever wants to come back to the club. I said, Cleveland Taylor, if you want to pop in. Wow. Eh? And, and I'm sure it would be, be great to see him back here. If, not not to play football, but just to have have a couple of beers and a ball drink. That's great. I'm probably speaking... I wouldn't say it's speaking out of turn, but that's an idea that mm. we've kind of spoke about before and brought up. Um, it'd be great to have old players back. Um, there was talk of an old player coming to the Hales Owen game. He was going to draw the halftime draw. Um, so, yeah, I think we've, we've spoke about this because we want to showcase. Everyone tells you who's your favourite player. Mm. And you could literally look back through every generation and have a different player from each one. And I think now's the time to, to remember all the good times. Because um, there's a lot of youngsters out there that are not going to... Mm. remember them but in 30 years time if one of them players turns up it's going to be a 40 year old sat in the stands saying I remember watching him and that's what we want we want people to remember the good times that's happened here and we can go back to them days when I first started coming it was a lot of local players mm. or Leicester players and it'd be great to, to get them back out so it's something we're looking at um, hopefully we'll get a few of them up this season um, we've got some that still live in Corby um, so yeah we'll, we'll speak to them 
Mark Lawrenson's not doing anything at the moment now that he's not on the on football yeah. focus anymore. So Mark, if you want to come back, I know the last time you did come back was for the charity game. It was great yes. to see you. So yeah. nicked my seat in the press box, didn't you, Mr. Lawrenson? So, um, you know, but there's a few other players that he played with that are still local that would come up and say, you know, I, I, you know Sean Diver's around and, and yeah. Elwin's around. So it'd be, it would be a good thing. And, it, and it's great. And we also need Jordan um, uh, Jenovic. No, the bot. The oh, yes. Are we thinking of that? You already yes. got that? All oh, right, okay. And uh, Gaz has hit yes. up here soon as well, maybe. We'll wait and see, Ted. Um, but yeah, that could be, that could be fun, isn't it? Hey. Yeah, we'll wait for the fixtures to come out. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens, see who we can invite. But yeah, no, nah, there's, there's definitely, there's a lot of good things, um, not just the players. Um, yeah, like I say, there's, there's a lot of good things happening in the town. Um, so we want to, we want to get everything up there. We mm. want everyone to be proud of the football club and proud of the town. Um, so yeah, but legends up here because funny you mentioned that. Um, the old Peter Sports Manager Jimmy Dean went to Scunthorpe. Mm. We follow them on um, social media, um, and the last game of the season, I believe Cleveland Taylor was the legend at the game. Oh. He was in hospitality with them, so it was good to see his his face popping up. I think he retweeted everything. So. It was just one tweet after another and another and another. <laughs> we could see him, but yeah, it'd be, be great to have him back. You know, he was a massive part of winning that title at um, Pool at home. Indeed. 95 minute. Don't yeah. think I've had a, a sound like that at Steel Park in a long time. <laughs> I'm still deaf now. But yeah, we'll but get them here. We're sitting here remi uh, reminiscing. It's a great thing to do, but uh, it's just one of the many joys of being here at Cool Town Football Club yes. TV, of course. Um, Michael, you're coming in on the side, good buddy. Oof, you don't be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the spot. I've had plenty to say this episode, really. Yeah, last, yeah. You know, so, uh, yes. Um, we are currently looking for supporters who want to come on the podcast and have a chat with us. Um, I'm about to have a conversation on screen here with Macca about people applying to come on, about sending an email or something. Is there yes. an email that we can set up where people could ask to come on? Definitely. We can type the, uh, the media at corbytown.co.uk. We'll be using that. So they can get in touch. Like you say, that email address, all the social media channels. Um, we monitor them all. So, yeah, it'd be great to have the fans on. Uh, there's a few that I've got in mind. So we definitely need to speak to a certain individual who knows who he is about the away buses. Oh. So that's one thing. I think when the fixtures come out, Mid July, we'll get them up here because the away buses, the away fans are great. You look at Bournemouth, last game of the season, mm. um, still had a chance of the playoffs. I went there with no chance, and the fans went there just for a great day out, and it made a fantastic atmosphere. So we are proud of our supporters, um, home and away, and yeah, we'll get we'll get them up here speaking about the away buses for next season, and we'll get more supporters. We'll make sure that they're sober and not have the usual kind of refreshment that they've had uh, prior to arriving at a game uh, yeah. when they're talking to us here on Corby, uh, Corby Town TV. But um, it's Saturday one o'clock, so we can sober <laughs> up from the night before and not being too worse away. But uh, yeah, that or the, the person that runs the bus is also featured on that picture from I don't know, it must have been fifteen years ago, taken uh, at the dugouts on the pitch at the uh, Triangle. Uh, if, if you're going to yeah. have, a, have a look on Instagram, there's many, many uh, very fresh young faces on that picture. It's, it's quite bizarre. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good looking back, to be fair. Think, all, the, <laughs> all the young faces that have aged gracefully and <laughs> indeed, disgracefully. Indeed. Uh, yes. I still look 37. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, we'll have to wrap it up there. I think, is, is there anything else coming from the club that we need to be aware of? Do you want to recap them? Yeah, we can recap. Um, obviously, we've got the season tickets and the youth membership. All the information will be released on Monday. Um, Pre-season friendlies. We are we are pretty much finalised. We're just waiting on one or two. Um, we will have two or three home games. Um, so they'll again be released next week. And then we're going to start really focusing on player recruitment. Um, Setch is already speaking to a lot of players. So, yeah, from last season and new signings. So we're, we're going to get them in here. Um, we'll find a day and find a way because a lot of people have been asking there was a supporters player of the year right and there was a manager's player of the year and there was a player's player of the year 
and we will arrange to get them down here i believe on the 13th of may so we can hand out the awards and they will be announced we haven't forgot about it it's just been hard because the players put in a good graft at the end of the season and they deserve some time off so give them a time off get them back in come and get the trophies excellent good work um so there's nothing much more to say apart from if you've enjoyed this podcast here on youtube uh, please subscribe if you haven't done already uh, hit the like button and the bell and the bell so you get a notification when we make more of these podcasts because it's not going to stop because it's closed season we're going to carry on we're going to be so in your face that come the beginning of the new season you'll be as up to date as we are because when when it does happen it doesn't happen you bring in practically a whole new team and we're going who's that number seven and this time, we'll know who the number seven we is. We will know. We, we will, will have introduced him. And in mocked at me and saying, <laughs> who's this guy? Where's he played? Where's he come from? Watch the video. Indeed. And uh, you won't be walking past him in Asda when you do a new shopping either. So that would be a terrible thing to happen. But uh, stay tuned. Thanks for joining us. And we will have an interview with Gary Setchell very, very soon indeed. And uh, we'll take his opinion on the end of the season and what he thinks will happen next season. But uh, it, it's a great season in prospect. So uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for enjoying it. Thanks for watching it. Thanks for liking it. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you.